After some buffs, AP comps have gotten a lot stronger, and Talia stands out as one of the most consistent carries. In this video, I'll teach you how to master this comp by going over the build, what items and augments to take, how to play the early, mid, and late game, and then I'll go over some in-depth positioning examples. The build is not very flexible as we have 6 core units for the comp. Talia is our main carry, and our main tank is either Echo or Annie. We play Alistair to give us Oxforce and Aegis, Cinder to give us 3 Star Guardian, and because her ability is really impactful in the late game, and Janna because she is the Spellslinger and gives Forecaster bonus around her and has a really strong CC ability. The most common level 8 board looks like this, where we add in LeBlanc to get for a Spellslinger and Zoe for Hacker and Prankster. We can also play 5 Star Guardians with Yumi and Lux. This is overall a weaker board, but if you can't build mana generating items on Talia, then it's recommended to play this board, but more on Talia items in a bit. The best hero augments for this comp are any hero augments of the core units and support augments for Zoe, Lux, Yumi, or LeBlanc. Other hero augments that work and allow you to keep them in your late game board are support augments for Sona, Soraka, Nunu, Aesol, Rel, Lulu, or Wukong. And if you want to learn more about hero augments, then check out my augment guide where I go in depth on that subject. There are a ton of ways to change our board based on our augments and I'll talk more about that and what you add in at level 9 later in the video, but if you are a newer player, just pick one of the level 8 versions and only play that until you get comfortable with the comp. Talia is our main carry, so we prioritize making items for her first. She has one core item and that is Sojin. This item helps her generate mana and lets her cast more often. Because she has 90 mana in total, we don't want to give her blue buff, but if you can't make Sojin, then that's okay, as it's important that she has at least one mana generating item. The second item wants to be a damage item, this can be JG, Deathcap, or Archangels. JG is the best because she already gets a ton of AP from the spell spoiler trait, so having her equipped with her spell is very nice. Deathcap is suitable for short, bursty fights, while Archangel gives you scaling throughout the entire fight, so it's stronger for longer ones. The third item wants to be either a damage or healing item, this can be JG, Deathcap, Archangels, Giant Slayer, Guardbreaker, Shiv, Hodge, or Gunblade. If you have JG, then it's okay to give her another item that builds from crit, so either Garbreaker or Hodge. If there are a ton of high health enemies, you can build Giant Slayer. If your frontline is weak, you can build Gunblade to heal them back up. She can also use Static Shiv, but if you can build any of the other items, then it's better to give those to Talia and give the Shiv to another unit like Janna or Syndra. After making items for Talia, you want to make items for your main tank, which is either Echo or Annie. Only play Annie as your main tank if you naturally upgraded her to 2 star, or if in the late game you only have 1 star Echo. They both want tank or utility items. Both hold Stoneplate, Sunfire, and Spark fantastically, and this is their best item combo, but here's a tier list of their best items. Echo can hold Morello as well, but don't make 2 anti-heal items because the burning effect doesn't stack. If you get a spatula, the only good options are Heart, Mascot, or Ox for a spat. Heart spat goes on Zoe. If you get Heart Spot on her, you can even put her into the backline. Another version of Heart Emblem looks like this, where you play 4 hearts with 4 Spellslinger. Here you put Emblem on Annie, because she has the lowest mana out of the frontliners. Mascot Spat always goes on Echo or Annie, and you can play this standard level 8 board with 2 mascots or play a 4 mascot board, and drop Cinder for a Spellslinger like LeBlanc or Sona. The only use for Oxford's Emblem is to give it to a tank to make it invulnerable for 1 second. We don't change up our board in any way, but we just give Echo the Emblem. The best non-hero augments for this comp are Blue Battery, Civilian Crest, Cybernetic Uplink, Electro Charge, Hard Crest or Crown, Jeweled Lotus, Ludens Echo, Makeshift Armor, Prankster Crest or Crown, Spellslinger Hard or Emblem, Stand United, or Star Guardian Hard or Emblem. I mentioned a lot of augments there and the best ones out of those are Blue Battery, Cybernetic Uplink, Jeweled Lotus, Ludens Echo, Stand United, and Spellslinger Hard or Emblem. The carousel priority for this comp is Tear, Rod, Chain, then Belt, and the best opener for this comp is Lux or Yumi with Star Guardians, but other openers that also work are Lux, Yumi, or Lulu with Gadgetines, Gangplank with Supers, Anima Jinx, Ezreal Carry with a strong frontline, or Undergrounds to play for a cash out and transition. Some good items to make in the early game include Sojin, Spark, JG, Sunfire, Shiv, Stoneplate, Zizirot, Warmogs, or Deathcap. You should always focus on using your first tier to build Sojin before anything else. After you make Sojin, you can make any of the other tier items mentioned before, 
and it's also important to make tank items as well. From there, your early game strategy will depend a lot on how good your opener is. In some games you play for a loss streak, and in some games you play for a win streak. And if you want to learn more about how to play the early game, then check out my guide where I go in depth on that subject. After the Krug's round, you should have my direction towards a comp, and the general requirements to play Talia is to have at least one component for Sojin and another component for a damage item. During the mid game, you always want to hold Talia and Echo if you're not playing them, and you want to hold the other units as well if you don't lose Echo for holding them. If you are weak in the mid game, you have two options. You can either roll level 6 or at level 7 to stabilize and stop the bleeding. If you roll level 6, it should be on stage 3 too. You want to look for a board similar to this. This is a very strong board with a great frontline in Poppy, Annie, and Rel, and a backline with Yumi, Lux, and Lulu. You want to put your damage items on either Lux or Yumi, and your tank items on the frontliner you two start first. Tank and utility gadgetine items go on Annie, damage items go on your damage item carrier, and gadgetine RFC goes on Yumi. If you have to roll at level 7 instead, you either do that on stage 3, 5, or 4, 1, which one you pick depends on how much HP and gold you have. When rolling at level 7, you want to aim for a board like this, where you stabilize off a of 4 Spellslinger and Talia or Echo 1 star. During the mid game, it's important to scout. This is so we can see how many other people are playing Talia. This comp can support 2 to 3 people, so if you see more than that going for it, then consider pivoting into another comp, like Threats Asol, MF Carry, or Soraka Carry. On stage 4 1, you want to be level 7, and from here, you have two different options. You can either roll level 7, or you can go for a fast 8. With this comp, it's better to roll at level 8 because we have two 4 cost units that need to be 2 starred, and we also use legendary units to play the strongest possible board. The games where you roll level 7 are when you're 70 to 60 HP or lower, you're lost streaking, you cannot go level 8 on stage 4 2 next turn, or if a lot of other players are rolling down here as well. When rolling down at level 7 on 4 1, it's very similar to rolling down on 3 5. You want to stabilize off of this board. The goal from there is to go level 8 on 5-1 and then roll for the rest of your comp there, so try not to roll below 10-20 to 20 gold, as we need the money to go level 8 later in the game. If you have a lot more gold than normal, you can go level 8 on 4-2, but at the latest, you should go in on stage 5-1. Here you want to end up with a board like this. Talia is our damage carry and Janna and Cinder are our utility carries. We play Zoe and LeBlanc to get 4 Spellslinger, 2 Hacker and 2 Prankster. Hacker and Prankster give us a lot of flexibility with our positioning. And another variation is this, where we play 5 Star Guardians to increase the mana generation of Talia, Syndra, and Echo. We also have 2 mascots in with Yumi and Alistar, which gives us a bit of extra survivability. If you get plus 1 heart, you should play this board. You put Heart Spite on Zoe, because with 30 mana, she casts very often and gives your team a ton of AP. The 4 heart board should look similar to this, where you play Yumi and Sona instead of LeBlanc and Zoe. You give the emblem to Annie in this case. If you get a mascot spat, then you should just play the standard level 8 comp, and slap the emblem on Echo or Annie, or you can play 4 mascots with a board like this. Here we drop Cinder for Yumi and Zoe for Nunu. However, dropping Cinder makes your board overall weaker, because she usually pulls in at least 1 or 2 units per combat from your bench, which can change the course of the fight. Oxford's emblem just goes on Echo, and if you get plus 1 Spellslinger, you put the emblem on Cinder or Zoe, and you drop LeBlanc for Nunu. He gives your gadgetine, mascot and he is overall a strong unit, so this is the strongest variation of the comp with an emblem. Star Guardian Spat is also very strong with a board like this. You put that emblem on Nunu to make him gain mana faster and grow his bowl faster. Depending on what hero augments you get, you can significantly change up your board in the late game. If you get Sona support augments, you want to play a board like this. Because Sona is a spell slinger, we can drop LeBlanc to play her instead. Zoe can be swapped out for any strong unit like Urgot, Fiddlesticks, or Leona. With Soraka's Hero Augment, we want to play this board. We play 2 Admin with LeBlanc and try to give a team-wide buff from the trait. The board with Nunu Support Augment looks like this. Or like this. Both boards are viable, but for Spellslinger gives a lot of AP, so try aiming for that board and add in Zoe while swapping Sona for LeBlanc in at level 9. Aesol Support Augment makes him stun enemies with a spell, so he is a great support unit to be applying heal reduction, burning, and stunning the enemies. This is how this board should look like. The board to play Rel support augment looks like this. We play 5 star guardians with it because the synergizes greatly with their augment, which grants the units armor and MR after each time they cast their spells. Lulu support augment is the only one where we don't play 4 spellslinger, and instead we play 3 gadgetine, and only add in a 4th spellslinger at level 9. 
we don't lose that on any value, because her augment grants the same amount of AP as the jump from 2 Spellslayer to 4. Wukong's support augment allows for an instant second cast because of the Star Guardian trait, so it's really powerful, especially for Talia and Syndra. We play a board similar to this. Once you've hit your board at level 8, you have two options from there. The first one is to roll for Talia 3 star. This strategy is very risky, so I would only do this if you're uncontested, you have a lot of gold after you hit your entire board 2 star on your first level 8 rolldown, in addition to having at least 5 copies of Talia already. From there, you make sure to slow roll above 50 gold for as long as you can, then roll down to 0 once you get low on HP. Generally though, this strategy is not recommended, because we can make our board a lot stronger if we go level 9 with this comp. The other option is to go level 9. Here we have a ton of options for what to add in. You can add in Nunu to get Gadgetine and Mascot, Soraka to get Heart and Admin, Mordekaiser to shred MR over the enemy team, Leona to get 3 Aegis, and to deal with his super tanks like Mech Set, you can add in Velkos to deal with solo carry teams, Jinx for 3 pranksters, or a strong late game threat like Urgot or Fiddlesticks. If you didn't make any anti-heal items, then you can add in Aesol, because his ability applies heal reduction to the enemy team. Depending on what the weather is in the game, you should position Janna differently. If she gives AD an AP, or mana, you should always put her next to Talia, Syndra, and LeBlanc. If she grants a shield to adjacent allies, then position her in the second row, and give the shield to Echo, LeBlanc, and Annie. Talia's spell targets the largest enemy clump, so we should position her in one of the corners, and usually on the opposite corner to the enemy carry, to make her hit as many enemies as possible. When Echo casts a spell, he dashes to a new location, usually behind his current target, shields himself, and then taunts nearby enemies. This taunt range is not that big, but if you position him correctly, he can taunt enemy carries and disrupt impactful late game spells like Sejuani's ultimate. Because Zoe is a prankster, we always position her in the front line, but if we have items on her like a hard emblem for example, you want to move her into the back line to keep her safe, next to Janna like this. General positioning with this comp looks like this. We have Talia in the corner, with Janna and Syndra next to her. Echo and Zoe are on the two sides of her to proc the prankster trait as soon as possible. You can use Hackerim to send LeBlanc into the enemy backline, but if you feel like it's unnecessary, then you don't have to use the Hackerim. Now moving on to some in-depth examples. Against the first guy, the big threat is Zed. Talia is positioned in the corner to hit as many of the enemy units as possible, and is protected by Janna and Syndra. We don't send LeBlanc into the backline with Hacker to further protect our Talia. Echo is positioned to dash behind the Sejuani and make her ult away from our backline, and Alistar is positioned to have a chance of stunning the enemy Sejuani. Against the second guy, the big threat is Yumi. Talia, Janna, and Syndra are positioned in the opposite corner of Yumi to be as far away from her as possible. LeBlanc is sent to the backline to focus Yumi down. Zoe is exactly 5 hexes away from Yumi to get targeted by her first spell. Against the third guy, the big threats are Samira, Aphelios, and Urgot. Talia, Janna, and Syndra are in the far right corner to dodge Urgot's ultimate. LeBlanc is sent to the backline to start taking down the carries. Zoe is positioned to be focused on first and quickly jump to safety, and Prankster is triggered. Echo is positioned to taunt the frontline, which can throw off the ult targeting Sejuani. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want cheat sheets for any of my comp guides, they're available for you to members and patrons, and links to those are down in the description. And if you want to get better at TFT, join the Discord. We got over 9,000 other players there who are hungry to climb. And if you want to get coached by me, the information is over on the Discord server as well. So take care and see you in the next video.